Welcome everybody to a round table transitioning to Walmart marketplace webinar. Appreciate everybody taking your time out of your busy day to join us to learn more about this. We're excited to have quite a few number of uh, experts to bring you some knowledge about this space, including Walmart, Perpetua, White Spider, and then of course Michael Levnar with, uh, with his, his experience as a marketplace uh, seller. Uh, Basically, we're going to cover really four high-level topics today. How to stand out in Walmart Marketplace, how paid search and media works on Walmart, the future of Walmart Marketplace, and advice from other successful uh, selling scenarios that we have. I'd like to introduce today uh, our speakers that are involved. We have Zach Hecker with Walmart. Uh, is joining us as well as Alex Kumar with Walmart. We also have Michael Levar with Cellcord, Magna, with Perpetua and then Sergio Cruz with uh, White Spider as well. And then I'm, my name's Eric Howard and I'm your uh, wonderful moderator today. So anything that bad happens, uh, just blame it on me, not our speakers. They're, they're here uh, bringing their expertise. So um, we're gonna kind of kick it off uh, with starting out with, uh, with one of our topics, but I wanna let everybody know that's attending. In, the, uh, in your Zoom, uh, window, you can ask questions throughout the webinar. Actually, I encourage you to ask them at any time. We'll be able to address those uh, throughout the webinar. And uh, we'll, if we have questions that are remaining that we were not able to get to, we will be uh, emailing you those later, along with the recording of the webinar. So we'll make sure we'll address all questions that you have. Um, but to kick it off, so I want to start out uh, with Zach and Alex with Walmart. All right, just to put you on the spot right out the gate. Let's go. How, if I'm a marketplace seller, how do I get my items set up with Walmart Marketplace? That's a fair question. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, and it's a great question. Obviously, something that everyone should be uh, going uh, into, coming across as they join the marketplace. Uh, I'll kick off for a second, Alex, and I'll throw it to you for some more specifics. I'll give a little bit of generalities and what sets our marketplace apart is typically every seller that joins the marketplace already has existing e-commerce, verifiable and existing e-commerce and most likely marketplace experience. So your items have already been set up. Very rarely would you be coming to market to the marketplace without already having done some sort of item setup flow or having a spec sheet with your information about your products already on it, or you're already working with a third party, maybe integration solution to help you manage your DTC business, marketplace business, and what have you. So when it comes to setting up your, your items on the Walmart marketplace, we have a few different flows. You can set up by match. If you're a reseller, your items already exist. You can do a flat file upload. You can go through an item setup wizard on Seller Central. Um, and then you can also use an API setup flow via a third party solution provider like White Spider, SKU Ninja, a bunch of the others as well. So um, that's my general overview. I'd love to hear what, what Alex has to say as well. I was going to say you actually covered all of them. Those are the primary ways to do it. <laughs> um, using a solution provider and um, an API solution is the best way to go. The, the wizard is great, but single item setup, you, it will take a little while. But yeah, those are the four main options. So Alex, on that, uh, how quickly can, can a seller typically get set up? Like if they have the things Zach was talk, talking about, right? They already have a lot of their information ready to go. If they were to do the API, how fast would that be? I mean, it should just feed in. Um, it's all, it, it pushes in pretty quickly, especially with like the flat file item set up by match. If you have it, it'll just pick and choose and it'll just show right up. And all you have to do is really just pick a distribution center and pricing and you're good to go. Awesome. In, in to answer your question there, um, Eric, with regards to like item set up via API and using a third party solution provider, if you're building into our API suite yourself, obviously there's quite a bit of development work that goes into that. That's why most sellers when they're joining the marketplace within the first 90 days will integrate with a third party solution provider for a number of different reasons, not necessarily just for item setup. And the longest part of that is actually just going into the developer portal setting up access for that third-party solution provider to make specific calls on your account's behalf, whether it be like inventory syncing, order syncing, item setup, things like that, a whole bunch of um, operational 
activities that you would have to undertake yourself as the seller can be done via these third-party solution providers. And when you speak about how long does it take to do item setup, realistically, you're already engaged with that third-party solution. And then you go through that setup process to make your um, like um, item setup stack fit within that solution. And then that extends. So the work that's actually done on your behalf is done between um, the marketplace API team, as well as like, let's say, um, White Spiders integration team to make sure that their API feeds are current. And then as you're ready to ingest your item setup feed, it happens within, I want to say all the feeds run um, and should be reported back with any errors within 15 minutes. And what about, is there an application process for sellers? And if so, how long does it take for Walmart to review those? To join the marketplace? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I, a point of differentiation with our marketplace versus others is the fact that we do have a relatively high walled garden and maybe a more strict barrier for entry for sellers to join our marketplace versus others, namely Amazon and, and eBay, who are open marketplaces. So yes, absolutely. We have an application process. We have a pretty strict verification process where our trust and safety representatives will go through your application and then check some um, some sources to verify that that information is correct. Should there be discrepancies, they will communicate with you about those discrepancies. Um, what we've seen in the past is multiple applications happening simultaneously, which can interfere with the system's ability to sort of like know who to talk to about what, and there can be a little bit of a black hole. However, we have launched services to help pull back some of that um, shield or shroud, I should say, of unknown, where you can actually email you can go into, uh, and I could, this will be a part of the, the, the take home. I'll send it to you, Eric. Okay. You, you type in uh, the email address that you use to apply, and then it, it will, and I think maybe the tax ID as well of the account that you use to apply, and that will start a, a communication chain with trust and safety and seller support to let you know sort of like what happened with your application and what the next steps are and sort of help you navigate that process forward. Best case scenario, I've seen sellers go live in the same day. Obviously, that's what we're very, very highly um, verifiable via like machine learning models and, and automation that we can say this is exactly who we think they are. They might have had some preset parameters, but it's possible. Typically, it's within seven to 15 days that trust and safety will already have done their, their review and allowed you to go live. Beautiful part is while that's happening, you actually have the ability to start setting up your account, including API feeds, while Trust and Safety is doing their review. So you finish your application, you get access to our, our user interface to start the setup process, giving us more information, letting customers know who to contact and what you guys are all about, doing your item setup, doing your shipping setup, while Trust and Safety is doing their work. And while they're doing their work, you can also um, start, start adding content, improving the content as well. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that brings me to the to the, kind of the next question I have. I mean, so while maybe you're waiting on the application process, how how would a seller, and I guess the question, Sergio, for you and Michael, how would a seller start making their listings, getting them ready to stand out? Once they're yeah, ready? I think I think the way to make your listing stand out is really to make it fit in. So Walmart has built out these amazingly robust, super detailed style guides. So whether you're selling yogurt or you're selling phone cases, they're going to tell you down from the character count to the images exactly what you want on that PDP to make it look not only high quality and appealing to the customer, but also in the Walmart style. Mm -hmm. So by following that, I know a lot of our you know, clients come from Amazon, they're coming from eBay, and they're doing their own style or doing styles that fit that marketplace. Walmart is a completely different marketplace and has different parameters for what they find acceptable. And so if you really want to be successful, if you really want your PDP to appeal to the customer and to Walmart, you want to make sure that you follow all of those and just go checking them off one by one. You want high quality images. You want short, uh, very concise sentences. Those are things that may not be you know, replicated on other marketplaces. Yeah, and Michael, I know that you've been through this a couple of times, right? I mean, you've, you've actually brought a lot of items uh, to the Walmart marketplace. And so at bulk, I mean, what, what was your experience in, in making that transition and, and making sure that you're, you're going along with Walmart style guides and scores? Yeah, I think that's really one of the biggest things about the platform. What I, I've always said this, I think I'm currently like 
Walmart's it's interesting because like when we started on the platform, it was more about just like listing products. Then, you know, really around like two years ago, what we realized is by really taking that extra effort and time to really understand the Walmart style guides, to understand, you know, the Walmart algorithm, so to say, um, by really understanding that and then really creating processes to really follow those things and have a unique process specifically for Walmart, it really gave us a lot of leverage. And What's really interesting about Walmart, what I love the most about the marketplace is that they really prioritize good quality products and good quality listings and good quality PDPs more so than just, you know, ranking hacks, I'll call it. So, um, you know, what we realized is by really understanding those things um, and by implementing those for your listings, it just, you know, it makes such a big difference for, you know, for organic rank, but it ties in, you know, makes such a large impact for when you start advertising and it's just, um, so we saw it like two years ago by really implementing a lot of those things. It was, you know, it gives a lot of leverage, so to say. Now and now it's starting to become more and more of a necessity, so to say. So um, what we're seeing is that like, just it's so important to just really understand what that is. And it's not that hard. You realize like once you really understand, you take the time to understand like, you know, what makes good um, quality listings on Walmart specifically, you know, how did the, how does the Walmart customer shop? Who is the Walmart customer? You could just, you know, there's so much you could do and it has such a large impact right away, but also for the long run. So it's just for us setting up the catalog really well in the, in the, in the start is so important. And, you know, that's one area of it, but the next area is that Walmart's really um, strongly based on conversion rate. Um, you know, in my experience with Amazon, it's like all sales volumes with Walmart. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of conversion rate. So there's a lot of, you know, we like to just kind of walk through like the customer's shoes, so to say, and just try to address every single point of your listing and your product to try to, you know, whatever you could do to really increase that conversion rate and make it a good experience for the customer. So, you know, WFS is obviously a touch point that helps you get the click through, you know, price, you know, you reduce badges, you know, there's, I, I think for every stage in the customer journey, there's different things you could, you know, work on improving that'll help you really get that um, conversion rate increase. So we just like to walk through each of those things. Um, and really make sure that, um, you know, you're addressing all those things because, you know, some sellers might have, you know, nationally known brands, which, you know, you know, you might think you're at a disadvantage. I would say as a third party seller and a marketplace seller, there's so many advantages you have um, mm. that you're able to do. So if you're properly leveraging those, it, it really, you're in a really good spot. It's just most people just complain, you know, about, you know, some of the issues and challenges of a new marketplace or, you know, of, you know, that marketplaces have in general. But if you really, you know, probably leverage a lot of the advantages. Um, you know, we, we've seen that as a massive impact. So we put a, almost all our focus goes on probably structuring listings um, based on style guides, but then doing whatever work we can to really increase conversion rate. And, you know, I like to say there's around like 20 main touch points for conversion rate, but even a few basic things just really have a big impact. Yeah, I, uh, you know, on that, I, I like when I think about this, you know, it's like, switching softwares in a way or adding another software, you have to get in and learn that system. I mean, Walmart market, Walmart is a different retailer than other retailers, right? So they're going to have a different system, but the more that you can get in there and, and dig into it. And I like your point about a larger seller versus smaller. You actually, you know, maybe with a smaller, you have more time to dedicate towards learning that new system. The further you go deeper, the more detailed you get, the more opportunities you'll have. Whereas some other folks may not have that attention to the detail. Right. And, and speaking of the detail, I mean, we have, you know, the marketplace has a listing and a content quality score. Magda, what's your, what, what are those scores? What do they, what do they mean? And, and why are they important? Yeah. So the kind of the listing quality scores is essentially a score that Walmart gives you um, based off of like the, you know, essentially the quality of your content. Um, so that's things like, you know, your title, your description, your images, how many reviews do you have? Things like that. So all of kind of essentially like, you know, when, when a customer comes in and clicks on your PDP, what is it that they're seeing? And what is the quality of that, you know, imagery and of those descriptions and things like that? Mm. Um, so I, I can probably take that answer from like an advertising perspective and maybe Sergio, you want to take it from, you know, a, another perspective. Um, <clears throat> so from an ads perspective, I, it can be broken down into two ways. So the first one is like essentially organic rank, right? So when you have really good content and quality, um, sorry, good quality of your content, uh, Walmart's team can then go in and easily click into your PDP, find the keywords that are most relevant to your specific product and your category. Um, and then when they do that, they're able to rank you highly on those terms. When you have a lot of missing pieces on your PDP, when Walmart's team is going in and trying to find you know, relevant keywords, they're gonna be like, 
you know, what am I looking for? What, what is this? What are some relevant keywords I can attach this item to? Um, so that's the first thing. Um, and then the second thing is from an ads perspective. So let's say you're running an auto campaign. Um, an auto campaign, you run bids at an item level. So similarly, you know, what Walmart's team is going in and they're searching your PDP to then find which terms you should be targeting through your auto campaign. So similarly, you know, if you're, you don't have a, you know, don't have a lot of good descriptions, you have a lot of missing keywords, it's going to be hard for their team, um, you know, to target those keywords um, from a keyword level. Um, and then just thinking about it, you know, if you have a lower organic rank, um, let's say you're on page four, um, mm -hmm. when you start to advertise, um, you're essentially competing against all items and all brands from page one to page four. So if your content quality is, is, is landing you at a low organic rank, no matter how hard you try on advertising, it's going to be pretty hard to get you to, you know, that first and second page. Whereas, you know, if you start with a better quality of content, your organic rank is already higher. Let's say it lands you on page two. Then you know you put in advertising, you start you know bidding on keywords that are relevant. You're then only competing against a smaller uh, pool of items, um, and essentially your advertising is, is is just more effective as well. Excellent, thanks, Magna. Uh, Sergio, you got anything to add to that? That was very very good. Um, yeah, I would say um, content having a high acceptable content score is the way to get your foot in the door, um, and it's not like you know a lot of these parameters are they're not arbitrary so walmart does it because there's data that shows you know customers are more likely to convert with a shorter title or when there are more than three key features of bullet points so the the customers in mind that's the first part and then the second part is if you're missing keyword words from your title and from your description it's very hard for walmart to categorize your item within their ecosystem so if you put a bunch of you know fluff in your title none of them are actual keywords your item might just be lost in the Walmart system. You might be asking, why doesn't it show up when I search for X, Y, and Z? Well, a lot of it could be that, you know, you're missing a lot of these important components. You know, it's, this uh, discussion happens a lot. And I'm, I've always encouraged suppliers and sellers to, you know, the more genuine that you can be and the more that you can tell your story in an authentic way and, and just speak the truth, the more the algorithms are going to favor that. And I think that we've seen algorithms over time Right, even going to Google and everything, that all these algorithms are looking for the truth to deliver back to the customer. And I mean, I, can, I, I do applaud Walmart on its ability to try to control that and try to get down to basically the truth so they can deliver to the customer the best product that's most relevant so that they can get what they want and they can depend on Walmart to continue to deliver that. So I think with that top line vision, it always kind of gives that good guiding principle to that. Uh, Alex, Zach, do y'all have anything you want to add to? the significance of the scores that are within the marketplace? Yeah, Alex, I went first last time, you wanna go? Yeah, um, I think uh, Sergio and Megna did a great job of just highlighting that you wanna have the best possible product page to essentially give you almost an in-store experience because you really can't touch or feel the item, right? Having the best description, like Sergio said, more than three bullets, when you're buying something, you want to see the front, back, and the bottom, right? Not just the front of a product. So these listing quality scores, we give you insights on where you can improve. Like Sergio mentioned, do you need to include a keyword? Is it categorized properly? Is your offer set well? Are you, you know, shipping parity, pricing parity? And all of these things are really key in giving you a holistic way of figuring out how to be the best seller to win that buy box. Yeah. Well said. And touching back on what Eric mentioned, uh, the trust factor, when he's talking mm -hmm. about be your genuine self, describe your product as best as you can in order to sort of like allow the algorithm to do its thing. It comes down to the most important thing for Walmart and its customers is maintaining that trust that we work so hard to build and mm -hmm. what goes into listing quality score. And I think we'll touch on it maybe in a little bit more detail later is like the pro seller badge these things, these trust signals that we've built into the marketplace to convey to the customer that you are shopping with a marketplace seller who is also laser focused on your um, experience. And that extends from the listing to the performance metrics to, um, to the customer and to the, the offer itself. So um, I do have some slides I can go through that does touch on a uh, listing quality score as well as pro seller badge if we have time, but I just to reiterate the importance of trust and how we extend 
um, through the listing quality dashboard and the pro seller badge that trust mechanism into sort of like the consumer purchase decision process. Yeah, that's excellent. Thanks, Zach. And I think that, uh, yeah, we're going to get into the, uh, the pro seller badge as well. I, I do want to kind of lay out a little bit about the paid search side within the marketplace, yep. right? To, and then, so on the paid media side of the marketplace, what, what kinds of uh, media are available? Magna, maybe you can help answer that one. Like what, what are the options that sellers have? Yeah, yeah. So as of right now, um, there are kind of two main options. First one is sponsor product. And the second one is Walmart DSP. Um, and I know, you know, there are talks of having, you know, new ad units coming out and things like that. So definitely if you're interested in learning more, I'm sure there, there'll be new information coming out. Um, so I'll kind of touch on the sponsor products to begin with. Um, so for those of you who might not know, sponsor products are CPC ads. So, uh, so CPC ads that appear when a customer searches for a specific query, uh, query. So let's say I were to search for, you know, water bottle. And um, then I would be, you know, shown with a page that shows a bunch of items um, that are relevant to that query. Um, so this is run through two types of campaigns. So a manual or an auto campaign. Um, I can briefly go into what those are. Um, so a manual campaign is essentially a keyword campaign. Um, so this is when you're uh, setting up a campaign that you're essentially telling Walmart, you know, these are a list of five, 10, 15 keywords that I want to target. Um, and for those keywords, you set an individual bid. So let's say the word water bottle for an exact match, you would set a bid of, let's say, 35 cents. And that would be the bid that Walmart would um, essentially serve you on. Um, and then an auto campaign on the flip is essentially when you're setting a bid at an item level. So say you have this specific water bottle that you're looking to sell, you would put a bid associated to that item and Walmart through things like, you know, your content and your PDP would then assign keywords that it thinks is relevant to you. Um, and, and I often get the question, you know, which one should I run? Um, and I think the answer is kind of twofold. So the first one I would say, it depends on your strategy. So if you're looking to grow your brand presence and visibility on Walmart, especially if your product's like non-differentiable, if you're in like a very competitive category, um, that's when you would run both an, uh, an auto and an, a manual campaign. So I know Walmart often says like explore and exploit. That's kind of their strategy. Um, so in that sense is, you know, your manual campaign, you're able to be very strategic with what keywords you'd want. And then your auto campaign, you're also finding keywords that you might not even have known are you know relevant to your product, but you're finding those through the auto campaign. So, you know, water bottle for kids, maybe that's a keyword that was never in your manual campaign, but now you're able to target it through your auto campaign. Um, and through on-demand reports on Walmart, you're able to see exactly which keywords were targeted. And then essentially you would take those keywords from your auto campaign and now target them in your manual campaign. Um, and then, you know, if you already, sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. And then if you already have like brand presence, you know, or you're a pretty big brand, that's when I would say maybe you could turn off that auto campaign and run just your manual campaigns. And you'd be very strategic. Let's say you have a list of five keywords and you're like, I just want to be very aggressive. I want to have very aggressive bids. That's where you would run, you know, just that uh, manual campaign and, and maybe turn off your auto campaign for a little bit. Um, so that's kind of a lot about sponsor products. And then, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of, um, you know, resources online where you could find the, uh, you know, information on the specific placements and things like that as well. Um, and I'll briefly touch on to Walmart DSP. Um, so this is pretty much a partnership that's run through trade decks. Um, so for those of you who are not aware of what DSP is, it's known as the demand side platform. So this allows plat brands to use Walmart shopper data to place targeted ads across the web. So this is not just going to be on Walmart's own sites. It can be, you know, when someone's on, you know, a random Google site, they're able to see uh, uh, essentially a Walmart ad. Um, so through this partnership, uh, advertisers are going to have access to connected TV, video, audio, mobile display. So all ad units that are available through Trade Desk. Um, and, and what's really useful about this, I would say, is that advertisers are able to reach customers at now any point of their browsing journey. So not when they're just on walmart.com, you know, they could literally just be searching on Google for just about anything. Um, and they'll be able to see, you know, this Walmart ad pop up. Um, and what's also cool is you're able to have targeted audiences. So, you know, say if you were selling a kid's coloring book, you're able to set a targeted audience towards, let's say, you know, mothers 
you know, age this and this. So through that Walmart shopper data, you're also able to understand, you know, who are your target audiences and who do you actually want to serve this ad to um, that's more likely to convert? Yeah, I would think that that'd be a good, uh, I mean, when we talked about earlier about investing at Walmart, right? You're, I mean, you're opening up a new market, uh, you know, for yourself as a seller. I would probably it'd probably be wise to look at the DSP and really try to drive more traffic to that PDP and, and focus in on that as, as a retail outlet. I would yeah. think that, that, and how long has DSP been out and available for at Walmart? Um, not too long, Zach, do you know exactly? Oh. It was like announced last August, so still yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Alex, do you have anything you want to add to the, uh, to the me pay media side? No, I think Megna covered it all. I think she knows the program better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I'm so glad she's here. The DSP is like way better. Than I, I breathe this in and out every day. So yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> One thing we did, I know this, the general topic here was how do you make your offer stand out? And we just obviously didn't mention Walmart fulfillment services, having a specific tag on your, uh, your PDP and on the offer associated with that paramount to success, paramount to standing out as well in terms of search relevance, you're going to be indexed much higher. Um, and then conversion as well. So Walmart Fulfillment Services, for those, those of you that don't know, is um, our own warehousing pick pack ships. Mm -hmm. We have uh, akin to what you guys might've been used to in, in FBA or plugging into other third-party solutions like Deliver or Ruby has fulfillment, things like that. So Walmart Fulfillment Services um, growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. When we launched, uh, there was like an application period and a wait list and kind of had to check back in and then hopefully your number got called. Now uh, we've worked through all those hurdles. We have next to um, like same day acceptance. There should be no meaningful wait times associated with your application into it. Future state, which I will get to a little bit later is it'll be um, like a singular application into the Walmart marketplace will also connect you into the WFS. Right now they are standalone services. Um, but we are bridging that gap as, as quickly as possible to help. So, so you basically, like when you get set up as a seller, you'd have to go and apply then for WFS or Walmart Fulfillment Center services, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Mary's up. Similarly um, so with, with the Connect services as well. You have to basically go in and do a secondary application, get accepted into the program to start participating within those services. And, and Connect meaning the advertising? Walmart advertising. Yep. Okay, gotcha. That's excellent. And then, you know, you also brought up too, Zach, about the pro seller badge. So what's the difference between the pro seller badge and WFS? I mean, because the pro seller badge is also a, a pretty critical thing for your item to stand out, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pro seller badge is like a unique badge that lists. Is it cool if I just share my screen real quick? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. All right, bear with me, guys. I got to track down which slide I have this on. While Zach's pulling that up, I'll just say that um, WF, we even integrated WFS from, I think, when it was in beta. And I would say it probably was the biggest impact for our sales to date of anything we've done with Walmart. So, um, yeah, I'm a big advocate of WFS. Sorry, I'm just going to skip ahead here. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Appreciate that. And you're well, I'm welcome to throw it back over to you. And you can talk away. WFS is very, very important to us. Um, okay, awesome. So the pro seller badge, let me just get you guys a photo here real quick. So shipped and sold by Walmart Marketplace, Walmart Marketplace seller, this would be your seller name right here. Hope you guys can see my mouse wiggling right there. And then the pro seller icon right here is not something that's given. It, it's something that's earned by uh, marketplace mm -hmm. sellers. Uh, it has to be a combination. Uh, here's the benefits of it. Boost your exposure, provides that customer confidence and trust factor that we're talking about and it drives conversion. Um, all right. Yeah. No sign up process. You, you earn the qualifiers or you meet the qualifying criteria and we automatically apply this onto your, your account. Um, here, are the, the, the criteria that I mentioned, um, so it's refresh every fifth. So refreshes twice a month. So you hit your specific metrics and to qualify, you get notified whether you are in compliance or not in compliance. And then if you are pushed out of the program, you become back in compliant by the next review date, it'll be automatically applied to your account again. So delivery defect rate, seller cancellation rate, order minimums, listing quality score, we mentioned that earlier, mm -hmm. compliance with marketplace policy. So no policy violations, your listing quality score on your core catalog is above at least 70%. You're hitting an order minimum threshold. So we have confidence that you will be able to meet demand as this badge gets applied and demand increases, conversion increases. 
You're not canceling your order. So customers are happy when they're interacting with you and they're getting what they want, which is the delivery defects rate. So less than or equal to 10%. So nine orders you ship, nine of them are accurate. That is an extremely low threshold for participating in a program like this. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, but oh, this, and this goes into a little bit more detail. I'm happy to talk about this in, in more length, maybe on a secondary call, but I don't want to take so much of our time. I really want you guys just to see um, where it's called out to you. So your pro seller badge here, where it says at risk. Um, this is lives within seller center um, under here, growth opportunities on this left-hand nav column. We'll take you right in here talking about listing quality and a part of the listing quality piece will be your pro seller badge um, metric breakdown. And these are the four quartiles, what you'll see within that, within that section, uh, that, that tile when you navigate to this. It'll say like, you know, start it um, before you meet the criteria. You met the criteria, you, you are an active pro seller or your pro seller's badge is at risk. And so the next time it refreshes, if this is not addressed, you'll be booted. And then you'll also have another opportunity to get back in on, you know, every 15 days or so. Um, yeah, hopefully that was enough of an overview to provide some clarity to what the pro seller badge is and sort of what it does and how you can sort of see where you are in earning that meaningful um, conversion booster onto your account. Yeah, I think it'd be, I agree with you, Zach. I think it'd be neat to kind of dive into that deeper on a, on a webinar dedicated to that as well, because yep. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I mean, I'm sure a lot of sellers would love to get that badge, right? And I think it's about how do we get those steps to make that happen? And then on, uh, does if you have a WFS already before you have a pro seller badge, would WFS kind of help you achieve some of that criteria at all? So we will take into account like WFS order metrics, um, but realistically we much prefer the seller fulfilled order metrics to meet that qualifier mm -hmm. because it's, it is technically attached to all of your offer, not just your WFS offers. Yeah. Um, it helps, but it's, it's not like the paramount one. This one is more so like we want customers to have confidence in you as the seller and your ability to fulfill yourself. When your item is in the Walmart fulfillment services, we've already done the due diligence to make sure it is the right item and it will ship out on time and get delivered. And, and we hold the responsibility for that customer interaction. And that is also branded on the, the offer as well. So it'll say, you know, Walmart fulfilled, fulfilled by Walmart fulfillment services rather than fulfilled by seller. And that is a, a huge conversion booster as well as a, a search rank booster as well. You know, I, I can't help but all these opportunities, you know, one question that I'm sure a seller would have is, let's say that I did get accepted, I'm in, I'm in the marketplace, is it, you know, and then I want to start doing paid media maybe to start boosting my items, is it, is it better to start your advertising right away and start doing that, or is it better to get your listing really up to par, make, make sure you're meeting all the content, the listing score standards, and then start rolling out with advertising? Megan, do you have a yeah, I'd love to hear your experience. And, and I think some of the sellers, I think, would have an awesome experience in this as well. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Michael, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. But um, I think, I think you know, so what, what I usually recommend to kind of our brands that we work with is take about a week or two. And that in that week or two is when you're getting your, your content ready, you know, and this is, again, after, you know, you've already been accepted and everything. This is when you're ready to start advertising. So take about a week or two, get your content where it needs to be, um, you know, working with partners like White Spider and, you know, other content partners. But I don't think your content ever is going to be perfect. I think, you know, content optimization is a continuous process. You know, you can be near perfect, but I think there's always going to be room for, for improvement. And, and that's coming from, you know, changes in Walmart algorithms, changing in customer behavior, um, you know, changing in, in, you know, your product offerings, things like seasonality, things like that. So there's, there's always room for improvement. Um, so I definitely think that, you know, you should start advertising, you know, as soon as possible. So maybe after that one to two weeks, when you try to get everything in, in sorted out. Um, and then I also think, you know, the reason for this is kind of that flywheel effect. Um, so this is essentially that relation to your advertising and your organic rank. Um, so when you first, you know, start advertising on Walmart and you start listing on Walmart, um, your organic rank is going to be pretty low, right? You know, you, you, your content is, is getting where it needs to be, but you probably don't have a lot of reviews. You, you know, don't have a lot of um, conversions yet. So your organic rank is likely going to be low, let's say on page two or three. 
when you start to advertise, um, that's when you're pushing your product through paid, um, you know, essentially through paid media to get it maybe from, you know, page two to page one. And then you're paying for that. Um, and when you get it to, let's say, page one, that's when people are going to start, you know, clicking on your product, buying your product, and in turn, leaving reviews. So those reviews are then adding to your content quality and it's increasing your organic rank on the back end. Um, so then, you know, at some point, what might happen is you're actually proving to Walmart that you're worth being on page one uh, for that specific search term. So say you're, you know, you're a water bottle, like and I'll use that example, and you have you done a bunch of paid media, you're converting, people are leaving reviews. Um, and you're like, okay, I'm paying a lot for this. And, and what happens is Walmart's recognizing that. They're understanding that you are relevant for that search term. At some point, what you can do is maybe start scaling back on your ad spend. And that's when you'll likely see that, you know, your organic rank is in a good place. Um, and then you can move on to different keywords where you want to continue to kind of do that process. Um, so it's all a flywheel. It's all kind of related, you know, organic rank and, and advertising is kind of all related. I don't think they should be, you know, standalone and options. Gotcha. Sergio, do you see it the same? Uh, I mean, do you have any perspective on that? Sorry about that. I'm in the q and I'm just answering <laughs> these questions left and right. But uh, <laughs> no, um, I, I think the one or two week period is very, very good just because you want to, and this is just from a business perspective, you don't want to waste money on PDPs that don't look good. Like if your title is, you know, keyword stuffed in all caps, a Walmart customer really isn't going to go for that versus another clean looking PDP. So I think if you don't take those two weeks to look at your content, you don't, you know, review um, the Walmart specifications for content, you'll just be, you know, wasting money on those, those uh, ads that you're serving. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think Magna's spot on again, um, that the algorithm is always changing. And so if you're waiting for that hundred percent score, if you're at 95%, you should start, investing in paid. Um, but you know, that hundred percent is very elusive and sometimes, you know, it's just worth it to, to, to go forward with a, with a organic and paid combo strategy. You know, I know an important piece of content that sellers and suppliers like to see and I think Walmart as well, everybody, shoppers, customers are the, some of those rich media components like the video, the three sixties, the feature sets, which I know we're, uh, e everyone's eager to get those back. And the last we've understood on our side of White Spider, at least, is that, uh, you know, video is really close to being available again on PDPs and then 360s will be coming next. And in a, you know, in a few weeks, couple months or so, don't have a certain time on that. But, um, but there's definitely, uh, uh, you know, a priority for Walmart to get those back and, and get them back on PDPs. Um, so, and of course, you know, if you're, in this webinar, you'll be getting notification of those as they become live as well. Um, you know, so I want to, unless Zach, you or Alex have anything to add to that, like when to start kind of paid media, when you yeah. feel like that trigger is, you have anything you want to add? I, I think they nailed it. One other piece that I would say in favor of starting your advertising early, and it kind of goes back to as you migrate from automatic to manual campaigns. Mm -hmm quite a bit of data on what your customers are clicking or what they're searching for when they click on your product. And then you can take that data. And if it might be um, like a relevancy term that is automatically applied to your, uh, to your bid, then you can actually take those keywords and work them back into your PDP. And body. So taking yeah. some of the data that we released to you in, in terms of your, um, your, um, your advertising reports and working some of that feedback back into your PDP, which then will solidify uh, some more relevancy and, and allow you to then get more data the next time you run your campaigns back for maybe some some different keywords as well. So it's a it's an evolution and it never stops, right? We talk in our product release cycles about our, our item spec sheets and sort of like the way the catalog migrates and it's planned out for multiple years and we're constantly going through releases and, and updates. So sellers and and product owners from our, our solution partner network constantly are having to work with us, do active change management to stay, um, stay current, but our listing quality score will always be current and will always sort of tell you what we're looking for now and please make these updates. So never like take your hands off the wheel necessarily, unless you have somebody else to look at it for you um, because things do change pretty quickly. 
Thank you, Zach. Alex, you got anything? No, I think that's everything like Sergio said and Zach. It, it's always going to be ever changing. You're never going to hit 100 percent as we have a three year, four year plan. Things yeah. will change slightly. So when you can and feel ready, you should start you know, investing into advertising as soon as you can. Yeah, the only thing I'd add is having worked with Walmart for a number of years, you know, on the catalog, the media side of things, like it is evolving, right? I mean, it's just just the nature of the of the retail business that's out there. Um, and, but it kind of backs up again to, you know, coming to Walmart with serious vision and investment and dedication, you know, and, and those that are staying close and, and, and evolving, like Zach said, uh, are seeing success, you know. And speaking of that, Michael, I want to, we got about 15 minutes or so left in the webinar, and there's a couple other points I want to make sure we hit. I'm going to ask Michael some questions just from your experience as a seller coming to Walmart. And then also, I'd like for Alex and Zach to kind of touch on some, some of the future of the marketplace as well. But so, Michael, when did you actually get into the Walmart marketplace? So, if I'm not mistaken, I think I started selling on the marketplace first approximately like six years ago. So, it was pretty early um, in the marketplace. And obviously there's been a lot of changes since then. Since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So back on that point about evolving with it, right. I mean, you've, you know, I, I know you pretty well, like you've always, you always stay on top of asking questions, just trying to make sure that you're always on the up and up, but at, over that time, has it helped your business grow? Yeah. So honestly, um, I think that's been the biggest thing um, about Walmart is what I love is it's such a fast evolving marketplace. So if you're evolving, if you really understand the wall, like what Walmart wants out of the marketplace, so to say, um, it's and you do like a lot of the fundamental things and you have a lot of the fundamental things in place, like, um, you know, like we said earlier, the style guides and things of that nature. It's much easier, like people get concerned a lot about these changes, but it's much easier to adapt to these changes if you have a lot of the fundamental things in place. So if like you followed what they wanted from their listings, you know, how they want, you know, their, you know, what they want, how you, how they want you to sell and things of that nature. It's not, it's not, as long as you're paying attention, it's really not that hard to adapt to the changes. So, um, you know, Walmart for us um, has, um, it started off being just, you know, an added channel. We built a brand with products. Why not list it on Walmart to being, you know, our primary channel um, for a couple of our brands. And um, it's really grown into like, you know, there's such an interest, there's such an interesting opportunity with such a fast evolving marketplace and so much open opportunity that really by investing into it's interesting for me because by investing, it's one, it's the only platform that I think by investing into the platform right now, there's enough revenue where it's really worth, um, so to say getting, but also you're positioned in a place where you're, um, you know, you're lined up for the success for the platform to grow with the platform. Like I, my first product I've ever launched was on Amazon, um, was like a workout glove. And I would say like, if only I would have launched like two other workout gloves, I would have been retired. So like, I think with Walmart, it's like so early in the, in the phase. Um, and it's so early in the platform, even now, um, that you, there's still, there's so much room for growth if you're positioned properly, but there's also so much sales you could really capture now if you really just pay attention and don't just treat it as just, let me just list my product, so to say. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really big thing. It's to what, um, um, you know, um, we were saying earlier about, you know, what you could do for your listings. Um, you know, I really think there's like a few, you know, it's not like everything has to be perfect right away. Like I like to split it up in phases. There's things that like, you want to make sure from the start you have in place, there's things that you could add on to make your listings convert better and better. And then there's things that you could, once you learn about how your product sells conversion rates and pay attention to the data that Walmart's giving you, and they're starting to give more and more data, you can make further improvements. So like, I like to split up in three phases and really like understanding, you know, what impacts each of those and um, what changes you can make to improve a lot of those things, such as WFS, such as pro seller badge, um, I don't want to get off topic, but pro seller badge, like one, like we, we've seen that be like more of an impact than people think because of the new, the new change that Walmart made to the site. There's now a filter um, on the bottom where um, customers mm -hmm. can actually filter by pro seller badge, as well as now that it shows how Zach showed, like it shows it next to the at the card and buy, buy button. It shows the, where it used to not show it there. It shows the, um, if you have a pro seller, it also you know, and that's like the large, that's when you need the final push to really get a customer to purchase. So it impacts there. So there's a lot of these little things that you could do to really add on to your listing. Like Megan was saying, like, you, you know, it's not like you need all these stuff to start advertising or to start doing well, but there's so many things that you could add on to just give you a little bit more leverage to give you a little more social proof, which I think on the platform is so important on any marketplace. It's like, how do you get the most trust and social proof? So, you know, it could be through things like WFS pro seller badge. It could be 
do, doing things on your rich media, which for us is one of the biggest things. Like you can leverage rich media if you're creative about it to really enhance social proof, enhance trust. So we could go on for days about it. Yeah. But. No, I mean, I think that's good. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, right? And I think that uh, every business really has to, doesn't matter what business it is, but if you're in the business of selling, you know, in the marketplace, there's a lot of things to do. And I think that every business has to ask this question once or many times. I know that we asked it on our business, but when do you internalize and build your own resources to do all these things? Or when do you outsource? You know, when, you know, what areas have you seen, Michael, in your business that you maybe outsource to third parties or you're internalized that, that uh, and how do you balance that? So I think it's really interesting because I come from, like, I would say the Amazon background. So um, mm -hmm. and, and when we were selling on Amazon mainly, um, I was always, so to say, against using a solution provider services. Like it was all about like, you know, you want to have a hold on everything, touch everything, be really in control. I think for Walmart, um, why it's so, it, it's different and it's really important to use solution providers um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, if, like as Zach said, if you're coming on the platform, you already have, you know, established items, you have, you know, an established catalog. Um, and there's really, um, you really, if you want your, uh, there's a lot of, you know, other things you're focusing on. Um, I think it takes time to learn a lot of the different touch points and it takes time to implement implement a lot of them. So I think because of how fast Walmart's growing, um, if you're able to, you know, leverage solution providers to get there quicker and to, you know, help solve a lot of that learning curve, you know, you might not have time to really learn all the style guides. You might not have time to really handle your advertising. You might not have time to really, you know, um, manage, you know, a lot of these touch points. And what I see with Walmart is like people a lot of times set up spend a lot of time getting their listings up and getting their account going. And then it's like, they come across one technical issue and then they think it's, you know, it's, they're not selling, you know, and cause it's not, you know, like it's not worth selling or it's it got, got them annoyed or whatever. So um, I think, you know, by just, you know, leveraging solution providers who've been through all sorts of the hurdles, um, you're really able to get yourself in a position uh, on the platform now where you're, you're positioned for success, so to say. So, you know, I think every, company has its own internal resources and its own internal capabilities. Um, if your team internally is really strong at creative, it might be worthwhile for you to really learn that and handle that internally. Um, but, you know, in other aspects, you know, like catalog management or, you know, you might, I think you would just have to um, assess what your internal capabilities are, but definitely for the platform, um, because of the speed that you want to move at and because of, you know, um, it is pr pretty complex. There's a lot of touch points, you know, um, to really um, do, you know, to do well on the platform. You could sell on the platform without, you know, addressing all the touch points, so to say, but to really do well on the platform, I think there's a lot that could be done if you leverage the right um, solution providers. Yeah. And what I always see in this, you know, on the selling supplier side is that time is probably the most valuable thing that we all have, right? And not knowing how, to, you know, where to get the answers or get them quickly or be able to make decisions. Uh, it's extremely valuable. I mean, Sergio, you work with a lot of uh, sellers, you know, of all types of different categories and sizes. I mean, what are, is there a common thread there that 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 you would see as a third party that that is helpful for those sellers? I like think or, organization is key. Yeah. I think um, a lot of what I've done with a lot of our clients coming from other marketplaces is really just getting their catalog in a place where everything maps one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. where the ASIN is matched to the Walmart ID where every, where you can treat the businesses, you know, they're obviously completely different marketplaces, but understanding that they both make up an equal part of your strategy and understanding that the Walmart side, even though it may be smaller today is going to continue growing, is going to continue evolving. And if you put in that extra bit of effort to organize and make sure that it is scalable in the long term, whether that's, you know, setting up a workflow for content, whether that's getting, making sure your variant groups look good and that you have all of that set up in a, in a replicable way, that's really what's gonna set you aside for, you know, set you up for success long-term rather than, you know, like, like uh, Michael was saying, like short-term, everybody can sell on Walmart, but to be successful, you really need to set up that foundation. Yeah, Megan, do you have anything real quick you wanna add? Yeah, yeah, I'll just piggyback off that quickly, I think from an advertising AI perspective, what I think, you know, Perpetua and a lot of other partners do really well that 
um, is, you know, the tediousness of advertising, especially in a first price auction, um, you know, given the fact that, you know, you, you do have to go and constantly change bids, you do have to go and harvest your own keywords and, and things like that. Um, we're using, you know, solution partners like, like Perpetua and, and others who, you know, actually have AIs and have algorithms that are able to do that. I think then it's, you know, you're alleviating that tediousness and that, you know, that pressure on off of the advertising. And then you're then able to take that extra time and putting that into your content, putting that into, you know, how do I, um, you know, compete against, you know, these other brands and you're able to be more strategic rather than, you know, taking on the admin tasks of advertising. Um, so I think, you know, having content partners like White Spider and then having, you know, solution partners like or API partners uh, like Perpetua and then, you know, having all of these, I think, tools in your toolbox are just what's going to help you to, to succeed on, on Amazon, on Walmart, on any other marketplace. Excellent. So I got, I, we got a few, you know, about eight minutes left. I want to make sure, Alex, Zach, that you, that you both have some time to talk about anything that's new or interesting that's coming into the marketplace. Yeah, a couple things. Um, just to piggyback on what you're talking about, we have um, a program called Flash Picks. It's right now, it's exclusively for managed accounts. So accounts that have been adopted by a strategic account manager. But we do have plans to extend it in, during the holiday season to all sellers. And what it really is, is an investment in the marketplace seller and specifically gives like front page branding on our .com. It's a huge driver for brand discovery um, and conversion. It works best with WFS, but this is a, I know um, a lot of sellers have been giving feedback and partners and Zach and his team have been working cross-functionally to make sure that we take that feedback and actually offer something that's valuable. Um, and the, one of the big things is we want to be able to submit not only just promotions, but more bigger promotions that are actually going to get adopted. Um, and this is one way to do that. So during the holiday season, keep an eye out for that. Um, and it's going to be a huge driver for any of your partners. And it's going to help with conversions, you know, site discovery. Um, as you know, our website is built on site equity. You need those clicks, conversions, traffic, orders, all to get to that front page. And this will help get you even there faster. So um, real quick on that, uh, Alex, you don't necessarily have to, uh, I mean, is that something that a uh, seller would apply for or how do they get involved in the flash pick? So currently it's for managed accounts. So it's unlocked through a strategic account manager, okay. but during the holiday season that's coming up because it's been so successful, we will be unlocking it potentially for all sellers during the holiday season. And so it'll be everyone submit your promotions, talk to Megna and Sergio and like, let's get it done now. <laughs> Awesome. Love it. Anything else going on that's new, upcoming? Uh, yeah, we have a few things in flight right now. We have a big promotion for new seller savings. Uh, I'll just share my screen to make it a little bit okay. easier here. Okay. Uh, but it is a huge promotion. It's 50% off commission fees for the first 90 days. Um, and that's if you get your live on site by the 30th of next month, um, I think. Uh, sorry, next, next two month, uh, two months from now. But if you finish your application by next month, which is a lot, depending on what category you're in, mm -hmm. this is also rolling out in conjunction with WFS. So we're going to offer you um, either 10,000 units or 10 plus 10% 10 off fulfillment fees, which is going to help drive that acceleration. So I know a lot of sellers say the first 30 days was tough getting ramped up. We're still learning. Mm -hmm. Sergio is still working on getting our items, you know, up to par for content. Right. So you have those 30 days to ramp up with, you know, our partners like White Spider and Skew Ninja. But then we're giving you another 60 days to work with WFS. We're also giving you more time to have a commission break to drive those sales. And this has been exponentially beneficial. We had a similar promotion last year and we just said, why not have it again this year? It helped a lot of our sellers. And we wanted to make it a little bit better than it was last year by having these two programs overlap together. Um, that's that. You can um, apply at any time. You'll get, if you apply today and you go live by the 30th, again, you'll be automatically in place for these programs. Um, the other piece is our repricer. We do have a repricer that's out. Um, there is a webinar that's coming out on the 11th. So go ahead and sign up for that, but it'll help you with pricing and being price competitive. It'll help you work towards your listing quality and getting that pro seller badge. All the things that we talked about earlier today. Um, and I think those are the two or three biggest things that are coming out right now. And we'll let you know when we have more stuff. Awesome. Is there a way to, uh, we could pop a link through the chat on the, uh, for that webinar that's coming up. I will drop them all in the chat momentarily. Awesome. Um, 
Zach, do you have anything you want to add about anything upcoming? Alex nailed it. All right, perfect. I mean, we do have, uh, for those of you guys on here who are uh, brand owners who do manufacturing within the United States, there's a program called Open Call that happens every year. There's yep. an increased focus. And Open Call is a made in America. Uh, it's, a, it's a program where Walmart has um, a lot of, you, you apply as a vendor, you get invited to Bentonville on site. You basically have a, a, a I don't even know how to describe it, like, uh, not a round table necessarily, but you meet with multiple vendors during the day. You get awesome feedback on your products, whether you are store ready, aren't store ready. Um, right now, there's an increased focus and an increased application period for marketplace participative sellers who are brand new. The caveat being that you do have to do assembly or manufacturing within the United States to qualify. Um, but it's a fantastic program. I know a lot of people have that end goal inside is I want my product in every single Walmart store in the United States, then across the, in the world. And this is a major step forward for you to sort of like build that relationship with us um, with extra points being for those of you who do have um, sales data, catalog data, already living on the marketplace for the merchants to also look at, but that's open call. I don't know if Alex, you have a, a link handy for that. We are in the active application period for those of you who would like to participate in something like that, um, but still a very, very cool um, program that is our investment back into U.S. manufacturing, which is a huge importance for us as a, as a company. I yeah. think all right. To, to, to just simplify the whole sales pitch that Zach just said, think about Shark Tank and Dragon's Den. It's your opportunity to pitch to a Walmart buyer and say, I want in on the stores and they'll yep. give you a thumbs up or thumbs down or improvements, maybe a sideways thumb. Who knows? Yeah, it's it's a it's a neat program. And, and we actually uh, did a podcast on that in White Spider. Probably be interesting for some folks to learn more just from our perspective. Uh, it, Brooke or David on, on the back end here on the webinar, if you could throw a link in maybe to that, that YouTube, uh, it was, it was a fun webinar, but it's, you know, I mean, I think that that really kind of that particular program open call kind of encapsulates the opportunity at Walmart, right? It's different than retailers, other retailers, marketplace retailers. I mean, you, there's, there's such a long tail or a high ceiling, uh, in coming into, uh, to Walmart, be able to build that relationship. I mean, you just have, I mean, significant opportunities as a seller, as a supplier, uh, which is, we always want to make that point across as well. Um, as far as, and Alex, thanks for sharing those links too. They're all in the chat right now. So if you would quickly grab and click on those uh, participants, uh, get those on your uh, your, your browser tabs. Um, I, uh, you know, like to just ask, you know, does anybody have anything, any kind of final comments that you'd like to put out there? Magna, Sergio, Alex, Zach, uh, Michael, anybody? I would say apply today. That new seller savings promo is a limited time offer. We don't traditionally do it every year. Don't plan on it next year. Don't plan on it next week. I would say just get your application in today and get started and you know see how it goes. Awesome. I would say is that there's you know there's there's a lot of information and so many things you could do. I think you know, it's really important, I guess, not to be overwhelmed with it, like by just really setting up your products um, and just, you know, once you start like trying to figure stuff out, you, you're going to see it's pretty straightforward, a lot of the information. And like, like we said, like you don't have to, you know, implement everything right away, but, you know, just have a good understanding of, you know, how Walmart operates, you know, how, how, the, how, how the platform operates in general. And, you know, so you could just slowly implement, you know, every area. And there's a lot of great solution providers for every area you know, to really help you with. So um, I would say is, you know, just be open to really setting it up as uh, another channel if you're not already. And if you are, I think there, as I said, there, it's really two th it's separate things, just like listing your products and really approaching Walmart, like I'll say with like the proper respect, so to say, because it's not like you have to be crazy optimistic that Walmart's going to grow to be, um, dot com is going to grow to be, you know, a really large, you know, percentage of your revenue. I just like, even by implementing everything, now like you'll already start seeing significant revenue so um i wanted to say that two years ago or even last year as much as now so um that's my other piece awesome thanks Mike. and i just want to say thank you you know our partners like white spider perpetua and, and, and Cellcord, even as a, as a partner now helping with a lot of different uh advertising for multiple sellers not just themselves um really help 
drive this marketplace forward and make us pretty unique. I would say a large percentage of the sellers who do business with us are extending um, through solution partners. So kudos to you guys for staying with us lockstep and making sure that sellers have the, the best path forward to sell on the marketplace and really make meaningful connections with our Walmart customers. So thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Zach. We appreciate Walmart and all each other for sure. Um, hey, so for all the attendees, we are. this has been recorded. Like I said before, we're going to be compiling all this, getting all the recording ready. We'll have an email sent out to you the next couple of days. It gives us a little bit of time to make sure we got it all packaged up pretty nicely. And plus, we'll be addressing any of the, any of the questions we weren't able to get to today. I want to say thank you to all the, the speakers that joined. Thanks for your time. Thank you, attendees, for taking time out of your busy schedule. Look forward to more of these coming down the road. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.